If you live in the United States, you might be freaking out about inflation right now. At 8.5%, it hasn't been this high in 40 years. But we have an idea that might help you escape inflation while giving you the adventure of a lifetime. If you're open to doing something a little unconventional, then stick around because we're going to tell you about 10 places with lower inflation and a lower cost of living than the United States. All of them offer tourist visas to Americans and they have residency options in case you want to stay. Or you can have a real adventure and just keep hopping around from place to place until things settle down with inflation back home. We are recording this in May of 2022, so things may be different by the time you watch this video. Let us know in the comments if things have changed. Each country also has its own rules for digital nomads, so if you want to work online, make sure you do your research before you book your flight. And if you are retired, you can live comfortably in all of these places on $1,650 per month, which is the average Social Security check. All right, JP, let's dive in. What is the first country on our list? All right, the first country on our list with the highest inflation is Portugal at 7.2%. Cost of living is around $1,500 to $2,500 a month on average. Of course, that depends upon your lifestyle and where you are living in Portugal. Right now, the exchange rate is $1 to 0.94 euros, which is one of the best exchange rates we've had in a long time. So if you've ever dreamed of living in Europe, now's the time, especially if you're paid in dollars. You can get a 90 day tourist visa with no problem and there are one and two year visa options if you want to stay even longer. People love Portugal because it is really affordable and it's one of the safest countries in Europe. Yes, and Portugal is known for its incredible culture, its delicious wine and food, and the nature is amazing. You have the mountains and the beautiful beaches. Portugal is also known for its good healthcare and it is popular with expats. Some drawbacks of Portugal are that utilities, cars, appliances, and pretty much all big ticket items are more expensive. And also the weather in the winter can be kind of cruddy. It can be cold and windy and rainy. And you also need to learn Portuguese. Number nine on our list is Italy with a current inflation rate of 6%. The cost of living is a little bit more than Portugal, but pretty similar around $1,500 to $2,500 per month. And they're on the Euro as well. You can get a 90 day tourist visa and they do have permanent visas if you want to stay longer. Some of the best parts about living in Italy is it's Italy. What else, what else do we need to say? You've got Rome, Venice, the leading tower of Pisa. You've got the Italian Alps. You've got beautiful Mediterranean beaches. There is incredible history and culture and shopping and food and wine. And you can go into one of those little uh, country towns and buy a super cheap house. Yeah, they have those $1 houses for sale. There's a lot of uh, stipulations that go along with that. That would be so cool to buy a dollar house and then renovate it. Yes, it would. We could do our own movie. Isn't there a movie about that? Should uh, <laughs> there should be if there's not. <laughs> All right, there are some drawbacks though. Like it can be very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter, especially depending on what area you're living in. Utilities and gas are more expensive and the housing can be tricky. We have some friends that have recently moved to Italy and they've been having some issues finding the right place to rent. So you definitely need to have your patience. Yep, and you will want to learn Italian. Number eight is the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico, which surprisingly has an inflation rate of only 5.1%. Cost of living in Puerto Rico is between $1,500 and $3,000 a month, again, depending on how well you want to live. And of course, it's on the U.S. dollar. One of the great things about Puerto Rico is that if you're a U.S. citizen, you do not need a visa or a passport to go visit. A friend of mine calls it America light because it's a lot like America. The culture shock isn't going to be as severe. You're going to find a lot of the same stores and shopping options that you will in the United States. So you might make an easier landing there. And there are a lot of English speakers. And beautiful beaches. San Juan is a really cool city. There's some nice history there. But the beaches are stunning. You've got that wonderful tropical weather. They aren't known for their health care, but you can use Medicare there. So that's really important to our retiree friends out there. Some of the downsides are hurricanes. They're getting pretty strong and they seem to hit Puerto Rico quite often. So that's a downside. Utilities and imported goods are also more expensive. Yes, and the cost of living is higher compared to some of the other countries that we are going to visit on our list. But if you want to live in the Caribbean, Puerto Rico is the way to go because it is still less expensive than some of those other Caribbean countries. 
Number seven is France at 4.8% inflation. The cost of living here is definitely going to vary anywhere from $1,500 up to at least $3,000 a month, maybe even more. If you want to live in Paris, it's going to be more expensive than if you want to live in a rural area, but it can be very affordable. And they are also on the Euro, so same exchange rate as Italy and Portugal. They also have a 90-day tourist visa and they do have residency visas available. Yep, so you can fulfill your shopping dream and go live in Paris, which sounds very romantic to me. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> there is so much to experience in France. The shopping, the couture, the <laughs> history, the art. When I think of France, I think of all of the different type of art that you can experience. The wine, the food, the street side ca cafes, I could just go on and on. And you have Versailles, you have the Louvre, you have the French Alps, the French Riviera. You can go stay on the beach in the Mediterranean or in the Atlantic. I mean, it is just incredible a country to visit. Some of those places are quite expensive. However, as we mentioned, you could find some very affordable places. And we have friends of ours that biked all throughout France and they absolutely loved it. And they said the people were wonderful. But they did say that you do need to learn some French. You also cannot apply for a permanent residency visa while you're in France on a tourist visa. So something to consider if you fall in love and you decide you wanna stay, you actually have to leave first so that you can come back. Number six is Thailand at 4.65% inflation. Cost of living again is around 1,500 to 3,000 a month depending on your lifestyle. In general, you can live in Thailand for a third of the cost of the United States. And right now the exchange rate is $1 to 34 Thai bots. So that is a pretty favorable exchange rate. When you go to Thailand, you can actually get a 60 day tourist visa and you can extend that. They do also have permanent visas available as well. Some of the great things about Thailand are the number of English speakers. Almost a third of the population speaks some English. And there is an incredible rich culture and history in Thailand. And of course, everybody knows Thai food, <laughs> one of our favorites. Thailand is very famous for its food. And it's really popular with expats. So you're gonna find a lot of people from all over the world, especially Europe who live in Thailand. One of the downsides is that it can take a long time to get there and airfare can be expensive, but you're gonna make up that cost when you stay there for your 60 days or more. Because the longer you stay in these low cost of living countries, the more money you will save and especially benefit from the lower inflation rate and the favorable exchange rate. But get ready for some hot temperatures and get ready for some culture shock. You're also gonna have to watch out for what we call gringo pricing here in Ecuador and in Latin America, but there it's called Farang pricing. Yeah, so they have some different prices for the locals compared to the foreigners. So make sure you find out how much stuff costs up front. Number five is Belize at 4.5% inflation. Cost of living is similar, $1,500 to $2,500 a month. It should be a little bit cheaper than Europe. And the currency is called the Belize dollar and it's pegged to the US dollar at two to one. So two Belize dollars is equal to one US dollar. Tourists get a 30 day visa, which you can extend every 30 days, but you do have to go into the government office and get your passport stamped. And you could also stay for even longer and get a permanent residency visa. One of the best things about Belize is that English is the main language and only about 400,000 people live in the country, so it's not overly populated. Belize has a very laid back vibe to it, which may be a pro or a con. It has mild tints year round with 80s in the summer and 70s in the winter. You have two seasons, the wet season and the dry season. And the dry season is November through May. One of the really nice things is it's only a two hour flight to the United States. And in this little country, you have both the beach and the jungle, so you can have a lot of incredible outdoor adventures. Some of the drawbacks are that the cost of living is higher than some of the other countries we're gonna talk about in South America. And healthcare is lacking compared to many other countries on our list. Many expats keep their Medicare and they have emergency insurance in case they need to make a trip back to the US for something major. Healthcare, however, is very affordable. It can be muggy and buggy, and there's always a risk for a tropical storm or hurricane. And if you're looking for a modern urban lifestyle, it's probably not the best place for you.
Number four is one of the most popular places for expats. It is Panama with an inflation rate of 3.65%. The cost of living is anywhere between $1,500 and $3,000 a month, once again, depending on your lifestyle and where you choose to settle or visit Panama. The Panamanian Balboa is the currency and it's pegged to the dollar at a one-to-one -one ratio. Yes, and you can also spend your U.S. dollars there as well. They take both, which is really convenient. Yep, you can get a six-month tourist visa, which is one of the other things that makes Panama so enticing. And they now have a digital nomad visa that allows you to stay in the country for nine months. And they do have other types of permanent residency visas available. Some of the best parts about living in Panama is that you can live in the mountains or at the beach or rural countryside or in a major city. Yep, Panama has really got it all going on. They have really good health care. It's nice and close to the United States and it is safe. And most businesses take credit cards. You're going to find that is not as common in some of the other places that we're going to talk about. And also Uber is available in Panama City. Spanish is the official language in Panama though, so you're still gonna need to learn some Espanol, especially if you wanna live outside of a major city. The income requirements and investment requirements are quite a bit higher for the permanent visas though. Rent is also higher in some of the very popular cities such as Panama City and Coronado. So if you wanna live a more modern lifestyle, you are going to need to spend more money. Yeah, but you can also live in Boquete, which is really popular with expats and it's a lot more affordable. However, Panama can can be muggy and buggy like Belize. It is a tropical area. There are two seasons, the wet season and the dry season. And the dry season is December through April. Number three is our personal favorite because we've lived here for five years and that is Ecuador with an inflation rate of 2.89%. Ecuador is so affordable. You can live here very comfortably on $1,500 a month and up. You have to work very hard to spend more than $3,000 a month on your cost of living. Ecuador is on the US dollar. It's the exact same currency as the United States. So if you get paid in the United States from your job or your social security, those dollars go a lot further in Ecuador. You can come to Ecuador on a 90 day visa and you are able to extend that for another 90 days. However, you can only do that once every five years. But Ecuador has so many different temporary to permanent residency visa options available. So you will find something that will work. And they have a new digital nomad visa that's really appealing. The country is so incredibly diverse. You can drive 30 minutes in any direction and be in a completely different microclimate. You've got the mountains, you've got the beach, Beaches, the Amazon, and Galapagos. Ecuador has it all going on. The people here are awesome. They're welcoming to expats. They really like having us here. For the most part, Ecuador is safe, especially in the popular expat areas like Cuenca and Loja, Cotacachi, other parts of Ecuador are very safe. And they have great food that's locally grown. We love our produce. Our fruits and vegetables here are incredible. Yes, and they are so affordable. Your money goes so much farther. Now, some of the downsides is that not a lot of English speakers are in Ecuador other than the expats. <laughs> so you, it really helps to learn at least some Spanish. It makes your life so much easier and more fulfilling here. Yes, we always say you should learn taxi, mercado, and restaurant, restaurant Spanish. Spanish. It can also be hard to get from city to city. There are a few domestic airports like in Cuenca and Manta and Loja, but if you want to drive from city to city, there are two lane highways and it takes a long time. Despite the fact that Ecuador is on the equator, it is not super hot like you might expect, which may be a pro or a con. At times the weather can be quite cloudy and cool and rainy. We have a lot of videos about Ecuador, so hit that subscribe button and everybody who does, Daisy gets a treat. Yeah, <laughs> Daisy might get a lot of treats because how can you possibly say no to her sweet little face and her wiggle? Number two is Malaysia coming in at 2.2% inflation. Malaysia is very affordable with a cost of living on average anywhere between $1,500 and $3,000 a month. You can live, definitely live the high life at $3,000 a month. Right now, the exchange rate is about $1 to four and a half Malaysian ringgits. You can get a 90 day tourist visa and you can get permanent residency visas and a lot of expats do. Some of the great things about Malaysia is that it is extremely well developed. If you like big cities, then you will love Malaysia. Also, if you like incredible history and culture. 
There's also high quality healthcare. Some of the best healthcare in the world is in Malaysia. And a lot of people speak English. Malaysia is known for its beautiful scenery. The nature is stunning and the food is incredible. Some of the drawbacks with Malaysia is that right now with airfare, it can be very expensive to get there and it can be hot. <laughs> They also get monsoons and flash flooding. And there's a lot of population, so you have bad traffic and you're gonna have culture shock. It is a lot different than the United States. And number one on our list is Bolivia with the lowest inflation rate of 0.9%. This also has the lowest cost of living of any of the countries we've discussed so far. You can live there comfortably on one to $2,000 per month. Right now, the exchange rate is one US dollar to 6.88 Bolivianos and you can get a 90 day tourist visa. The tourist visa you get 30 days at a time, so you do have to renew once you're there. They don't have a traditional retirement visa like the other countries do. They have what they call their specific object visa, which is still a one year temporary or a two year permanent visa, but you have to meet specific criteria the name specific object. <laughs> <laughs> Cochabamba is one of the most popular expat cities. It's about 7,500 feet though, so it's a higher elevation city and the temperatures are in the 60s to the 70s year round. Santa Cruz de la Sierra is also very popular with expats and it is a much lower elevation. It's only 1,200 feet, so that's easy to handle. If you're like JP, if you've always wanted to go see the salt flats, now's the time. And the Andean culture is amazing too. It's full of vibrant colors and traditions and it's a much slower pace of life. Yeah, so you may ex actually experience some culture shock when going to Bolivia. That's pretty common throughout other countries in South America. Cash is king in Bolivia like a lot of the other Latin American countries so you're going to want to carry cash with you all the time and you're going to have to be doing those exchange rates in your head which can get old. And one of the worst parts about Bolivia is getting there. It's about a 9 to 10 hour flight to La Paz from Miami with a layover in Bogota. So it's going to be expensive and time consuming to get there. But once you're there, you're not going to want to leave. You will, however, want to learn some Spanish because there are not going to be as many English speakers. That is it for our 10 places to escape inflation. If we missed any, let us know in the comments if some place has both a lower inflation rate than the U.S. and a lower cost of living. If you're thinking of moving to Ecuador, we have an A to Z e-course that will walk you through every step of the process. Yeah, check below for a link to that and leave us a like if you found this video intriguing and we will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.